How do I define Mystic Wonder as a shader? In this video, I'll explore my best attempt and touch on some tips and tricks you can play with in your non-physically based render workflow. Hi, I'm Burke. Welcome to devlog number six, where art gets technical. After discovering Rival's unique approach to specular light, I felt that it held the key to unlocking Mystic Wonder in my art direction. After a few weeks of reference gathering, research, and shader exploration, I have assembled the base for Kyoto's art direction. It comprises of three elements, hand-painted normals, a specular effect, and a stylized outline. Like a lot of digital artists today, I'm excited about the potential of hand-painted normals, but there are some hoops to jump through if you want to orient the mesh in any direction, and it takes a while to paint. Thankfully, I discovered a hack that allows you to generate them in a couple minutes. First, bake your world space normal mat in Substance Painter. Add it to a fill layer on your base material. Change the channel to RGB 16F for more precision. Apply the stylization filter to the world space normal and tweak to your heart's content. Then bring the exported base color map that is actually a stylized world space normal map into Substance Designer. Bring your mesh in as well. Pick the world space to change it on your mesh, and boom, you have a hand painted normal map that reacts properly to light. Then I switched the color channel back to sRGB8 and did a quick paint vaguely based on this painting from the floating world period of art in Japan. Once I had my base, it was time to tackle the specular effect. I had a vision for a hidden texture that would only appear from certain angles and it wouldn't be based on the surface color or the environment light. After trying to hack it together with masks on the specular and metallic channels, the answer was the emissive channel. In hindsight, it sounds really obvious. Here's the base for the effect. First, I grabbed a dot product from the surface of the mesh to the directional light, and I had that drive the overall range of the specular lines across the mesh. Then I created a second mask based on the camera position and a custom vector that I can control in order to set the direction of the secondary mask. Finally, some basic alpha controls. I found that panning really makes a specular effect feel alive. The last part of the effect is the outline. I'm still deciding between two options. The first is just an inverse hole that I pushed and pulled to create thicker and thinner lines. For the second, I made a much more narrow inverse hole. Then I used Blender's random select and duplicated the faces. Next, I applied a displace modifier with a noise texture to create variety in the face orientation. This creates a more sketchy outline effect. These tests were done with no thought at all, so I'll probably land somewhere in the middle. I really like the simplicity of the first outline, but there are some moments in the more dynamic outline that are really intriguing to me. And that's all for today. If you're still here and you're curious how the character design process is going, here's a sneak peek.